Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I make a helix in Grasshopper. Now I want to be clear up front uh, because a lot of my viewers are people who are kind of new to Rhino itself and they might think that I am making a video about how to make a helix in Rhino, but I'm not. This is about Grasshopper. Grasshopper is a part of Rhino, uh, but Rhino has a built-in helix tool which you can find under the Curve Tools tab right here. Okay, so uh, with this one Let's turn the turns down a bit on that. Okay, so with this Helix tool uh, that you have in Rhino, you know you don't need uh, to use Grasshopper necessarily to build the Helix. But there are cases for people who are uh, used to using or familiar with Grasshopper where you might need to make a Helix definition. So this is more for people who probably are a little bit experienced in Grasshopper. And uh, they've come to a point where they need to make a Helix and it's really hard to find information about that online. At least it was for me. Plus, uh, my helix is not going to use any trigonometry. We're not going to plot any points. And if you look at my helix from the uh, end, you can see it looks like a perfect circle, which is how a helix should look. I found a lot of the solutions I found on online, you'd end up with a, a bit of a flat place on the two ends of the helix right here and right here. And when you looked at it from the right, it would be kind of kind of a flat place right there uh, right right in this area and right in this area okay so it's just because the uh, they're connecting a, a series of points with an interpolated curve and the last two points uh, always has a slightly different I don't know how to put it curvature or tangent or something to it so anyway my helix doesn't have that problem when you look at mine from the right uh, from the end it looks like a perfect circle okay so uh, we're going to be able to, with this uh, solution I've come up with, we'll be able to control the length, uh, we'll be able to control the radius, we'll be able to control the start angle, all right, and we'll be able to control uh, how many strands are on there. So we can add more strands. I've maxed it out at five because I think five is actually kind of overkill. Like two or three is probably uh, more than you'll ever need, you know, about all you'll ever need in most projects. And then, of course, we can also change the number of turns. And if we turn turns down to zero, uh, that kind of makes the strands a little more easier to see what's happening there. We're, we're adding strands equally spaced, you know, along the uh, circle of the helix, you know. Okay. So I'm going to just turn this back down to like three and give it some turns there. Okay. And then also uh, we'll be able to uh, right click right here, right underneath our where our inputs are. And we'll be able to bake that helix into a real object in Rhino that we can um, interact with in Rhino. So, so we can move this around or whatever. This is the Grasshopper Helix and this is the Helix in Rhino. Okay, and then of course, uh, once you have the solution, you can do other things with it. You could uh, flow it along a curve or something. Uh, you could pipe the Helix, you could loft the Helix. You can do whatever else you're wanting to do in Grasshopper with your helix but I thought I'd go ahead and make a video about how I make a helix in grasshopper so let's go ahead and get started okay so let's go ahead and start off with a fresh new new document here and the first thing we want to do is build an axis line I'm gonna have my axis run along the uh, the axis for the helix run along the X axis you could make it along the Z or the Y axis I'm gonna run mine along the X axis all right and uh, so we're going to come under curve here and grab the line component. All right. And a line component needs two points. So let's go to vector and grab two point components. And we'll plug them both into the slots on the line component. Now, uh, if you don't add any values to it, a point component by default points to 000, zero, zero the origin of the world. And that's fine. We want one of them to stay there. The other one we want to move along the x-axis. So we're going to need a slider to change the x value. And you can go to params and grab a slider like this. Right click on it and click on edit. And you can edit all of the things about the uh, slider. You can change the name and you can uh, change the maximum and minimum values and how many decimal points it goes out to or whatnot. But I'm going to show you a little bit easier way. Just somewhere, as long as you are active on the Grasshopper Canvas. Now, if you've clicked over here, it might not work. But if you're active on the Grasshopper Canvas, sometimes, and maybe it's because I'm recording, but sometimes I find I have to click on the Grasshopper Canvas. But anyway, just hit the space bar, and you'll get this little search box. 
And what we want to do is type in the minimum and maximum values that we want for our slider. So normally you use the search box to search for components, grasshopper components, but instead what we're going to do is type in the minimum and maximum values we want on our slider. And we're also going to specify the number of decimal points we want. So uh, this we're going to make a length, a length slider for our axis of our helix. And I'd like it to go from zero to say 20. Would that be good? So I'm going to type zero, but I want it to go to two decimal places. So I'm going to type 0, 0.00. Then we need to type a lesser than symbol. And now we need to type in the maximum value. So I'm going to type in 20, but we also have to include the decimals here as well. So I'm going to type 0, 0.00 and hit enter. Okay. So now we've got a slider that goes from zero to 20 and it has two decimal places. And I'm going to rename this slider length. All right. And we'll plug that into the X value here. And now uh, what we have is a line that goes, um, you know, that, that goes along the X axis as we slide this slider out. Okay. And so uh, that is our axis line. I'm going to select all of these components. I'm going to press control G and group them together. I'm going to right click on there and call that group axis. All right. Now the next thing we want to work on is the radius of our helix. And basically what I want to do with the radius is make a copy of this line and move it out along the Y axis by whatever I specify with the radius. All right. So let's go to transform and get the move component. And we're going to plug the, uh, I think this is G stands for geometry. Yes. So we're going to plug this axis line into the geometry slot here on the move component. And uh, if we back out a little bit, you'll see that it actually moved it up 10 units in the Z direction. So that's what it does by default. It moves things up 10 units in the Z direction. But I want to move things along the Y direction. So let's go to vector and grab a uh, y, unit Y vector. All right. So what this is going to do is move things in the Y direction by one unit. That's what a unit vector does. It moves things in a specified direction by one unit. Uh, but now we want to specify how far we want, and that's why they've provided this factor slot here on the other side. For that, we're going to need a slider for our radius. So I'm going to hit space, and I want my radius to go from 0 to 5 with two decimal places. So I'm going to type 0, 0.00 less than 5.00. Hit enter, and there we go. We've got that. I'm going to rename that. I'm going to right-click on it and rename it radius. Okay, so we'll just plug that into the factor right there. And now, as we move this radius out, it's going to move that line out by whatever amount we specify. Okay, so this is the radius of our helix. And basically, the move component made a copy of the axis line and then moved it out. I'm going to move uh, these two components over just a little bit. And we might move this over as well. There we go. Okay, actually, move this over a fair bit more. I'll move this over this way. All right. Uh, so now what I want to do is rotate this line along the Z X axis right here or Z X plane. I mean, around the X axis. So you could do this two ways. Uh, come to transform. You can grab either the uh, rotate object in a plane or rotate around an axis. If you are going to use some other axis, you probably well, I don't know. You could specify the axis, couldn't you? Let's see. How do you specify an axis? You specify an axis with a line. So I think I would use this one. All right. So you could either uh, create a line in, in, in Grasshopper or you could draw a line in Rhino and feed that in there. But you can also use the plane as well. And uh, you'd have to switch. Uh, for us, you'd have to switch to the XZ plane. I'm sorry, the YZ plane that goes like this. Okay, I'll pull that out for you so you can see. So we would want to use that plane. Let me turn the pre, no, that is not that. What is, what is going on here? Why do we have so many planes there? Oh, <laughs> cause I put it in the geometry slot. That's why. That was strange. Okay. So, uh, this, this, if you're going to use the rotate around plane, this is the plane that you need. All right, and then you could put your, uh, you know, your line up in there, and it would rotate it around 
within this plane. All right, but we're going to rotate around an axis because we don't even have to specify the axis. By default, it's using an axis, which is really a line that it drew. Uh, the component draws along the x-axis for 10 units. All right, so we can just plug this in here, and you can see it automatically rotates that. So you would only really probably need to use this other uh, rotate right here if you're planning on using like the y-axis or the z-axis. And even then, you could still use this one. You just need to draw a line in one of those directions, okay? Or you could probably draw, draw a line diagonally if you wanted. Okay, so that's enough about uh, rotation and planes and axis, I think, right? We're going to use this one. And it, by default, it's rotating around the x-axis, which suits us fine. It's also, by default, rotating 90 degrees. But we need to be able to specify an angle, which is going to be the start angle of our helix. So let's make a slider for that. I'm going to hit the space bar and uh, we want our, our angle to go full circle. Uh, you could do this in degrees or in radians. If you were going to do it in radians, the slider would go from 0 to 2 and then you would have to feed that through pi and then uh, a pi component and uh, then uh, that would work for radians. But for degrees, this, the slider needs to go from 0 to 360. Okay. So I think most people are probably more comfortable with degrees, so I'm going to use that, but you can use radians if that's what you prefer. So I'm gonna type in 0, 0.00 less than 360.00. So this is my angle slider here. I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna call it start angle. Okay, and we need to feed this through a, a degree to radians converter, which is this right here under maths, under the, in the trig section, you've got this big R here, and that is our degrees to radians converter. So we're just going to feed our start angle into there and then feed that into the rotate component. All right. Okay. And so now uh, we need to specify the angle and we can do that like this. Okay. And you can see it rotates full circle around our axis. Now, one thing, the rotate component is making a copy of the move uh, components line. I don't need to see that line anymore because now our focus is on this one. So I'm going to turn the preview off on that. All right. So we can only see the rotate component now. Uh, now it lets us see both this line and also the axis line when we highlight it. Um, eventually we're going to turn the preview off on this. So don't worry about the fact that we can see the axis line that will disappear when we turn off the preview. Okay. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is twist this. I'm going to set the start angle back down to zero and let's group all of this together. I call this the pre helix line. All right. So I'm going to rename this group the pre helix line, because what we're going to do, we've set this line up with the radius. Basically we've positioned this line with the radius and the start angle, and now we're going to twist it. All right. So we've just set up the twist is going to turn this line into the helix, uh, but we've set it up. Uh, before we turn it into a helix. And that's why I call it the pre-helix line. All right, now uh, let's grab the twist component for this next part here. So we're going to go to transform and grab the twist component and we're going to feed into the uh, twist component the rotated line here. So from there into the G slot on the twist component or geometry slot and it needs at least an axis also. So I think we can just feed the line. This is our axis line. We can just feed that into uh, the twist axis. And there you go. You can see it's trying to uh, uh, twist that for us. I'm going to put the start angle back down to zero just for right now. Uh, it'll make things a little bit easier for us. Now, one thing you can see how it's trying to twist it. It's twisted it um, probably 90 degrees. Yeah, a half pi. And uh, also it's got this kind of thing where it kind of like blends into, um, you know, to be, I guess you could say, uh, parallel to the floor plane here or something. Okay, what is causing that is the infinite um, option right here. So that's uh, abbreviated as I, and we, it's set by default to false, but we need to set that to true. So I'm going to right click on that, come down here to set Boolean, and click on true. And that's again right here, the I component. If that's something you'd like to like have control over, uh, then you can go to params and grab the boolean um, toggle switch here and you could feed that in like that okay and then you could switch between infinite and not infinite all right but i'm just going to set it uh, 
directly into the component here using the set boolean feature all right so it needs to look like this uh, not where it kind of like the slopes into the um, floor floor plane or into this line if you had a, a start angle okay now uh, because we now have this twisted line here uh, I no longer want to see this rotated line anymore because it's making things a little bit confusing so I'm going to turn the preview off on that I told you we would and so that's also going to turn the preview off on the line down here let me turn the preview back on and I'll show you what I mean if we bring the length down below uh, 10 and we click on the rotate axis you can see there's a line that goes from 0 to 10 and that is part of the rotate on an axis um, component so when we turn the preview off on this that line disappears that's right here so there were two lines our axis line that we made and also the axis line that the rotate component had made so now I'm going to set this uh, length back out like that okay so uh, now this component this uh, option down here is called rigid and that is set to false by default and that's exactly what we want so the last thing we need to worry about now with the twist component is uh, the angle but first I don't like my uh, connection line going through this group like this into the twist component so what I'm going to do is just double click on that and I get this little node and that will let me kind of route the connection around my group here okay all right so now we need to work on the twist angle and to do that we're going to need a slider for the number of turns that we want so I'm gonna make a slider for the number of turns I'm gonna hit um, space bring up my search box and I want my turns to go say from 0 to 30 okay so uh, and you could do whole number turns if that's what you want we're gonna do fractional turns in this case but there are situations where you would prefer to have whole turns whole number turns and that would be, for instance, if you were going to flow this uh, helix around a, cur a closed curve, you would need to use whole number turns, most likely, for that situation. Unless you wanted, it's going to look kind of janky if you don't. Unless you want the jankiness, uh, then you're going to want to use whole numbers for the number of turns. But uh, for this video, we're going to use uh, fractional turns. So I'm going to type 0, 0.00 less than uh, 30.00. Okay, so our turns are going to go from 0 to 30 and I'm going to right click on that and change the name to turns and now we need to convert the turns into degrees and uh, a full turn is a full circle or 360 degrees so each turn is 360 degrees so we need to multiply the number of turns by 360 so let's go to maths and grab the multiplication uh, component and let's also go to params and grab a panel and we'll double click in the panel and type 360 and then click out and then we'll scale that down as small as we can and we'll plug that into the bottom part oops into the bottom slot of the math of the uh, multiplication node and we'll plug the turns into the top slot all right so uh, this is all you need to convert turns into degrees but then we also need to convert the degrees into radians because the twist component is expecting radians so let's go to the math tab and grab our radians, uh, degrees to radians converter and we'll feed our degrees into that and let's group this and call this uh, little group here um, twist angle I think that'll work okay and we'll just slide this over here and we'll feed the uh, angle over into the angle slot on oops on the twist component okay now we have our turns are set to zero so that's why it's like that so as we begin to uh, increase the number of turns you can see that it's working and now we can change the radius and the start angle and everything is actually working you could probably stop here and uh, and it would work because even from the right um, this looks like a perfect circle if we zoom in really close it's a little bit janky and we're gonna fix that but there's an even bigger issue uh, if we set the number of turns to 15 perfectly it turns flat and uh, it'll also do that at 30 okay and it'll do it at 45 and 60 every multiple of 15 the line will turn flat and I have no idea why but interestingly it even does that in Rhino with Rhino's twist command so if we were to lay out a line say right here we'll make a, a kind of a similar situation in Rhino We'll go to transform and twist I'm gonna twist this line around this line so I'm gonna click on twist we'll define the start axis or we'll define the twist axis 
And uh, our angle, we'll do it for 14 turns. So I'm gonna type 14 times 360, and it seems fine, right? I'll control Z, and we'll do that again, and define our axis, and I'll set the turns to 15 times 360, and it's flat, okay? And uh, so this was such a strange problem. I was lucky to even discover that this was a problem. Uh, but uh, what we can do to fix this is just rebuild this curve. So I'm going to rebuild it. I'm going to give it 10 points. And uh, we'll just try that again. We'll twist it. I'll define the axis. We'll twist it for 15 times 360, or 15 turns. And look, there it is. It's fixed. So since that works with Rhino, it'll probably work in Grasshopper. And it turns out it does. All we need to do is rebuild this line. So let's come over here and... Uh, we need to rebuild this line, this rotated line, before it feeds into the twist command. So we're going to come up to transform, no, I'm sorry, up to the curve tab, go to utilities and come down to rebuild curve and uh, click on it and then right click on this group and click on add to group. So now it's part of the group but we need to feed uh, the geometry from the rotate component into the rebuild component. You don't need to worry about any of these other things, you can leave them at their default values and they'll work fine. Now we're going to take the uh, result, the resulting line that we just rebuilt, and we're going to put that in the geometry slot on the twist component. Okay, and you see there uh, how that works now. Uh, now one problem is we can still see that line there. That's the rebuilt line, and we can turn the preview off on that. Okay, so now uh, we can uh, do the turns, and even when we hit 15 or 30 or 45 or 60. It's going to work fine. So we've got that problem fixed, and that was a major issue. Now we have kind of a minor issue, which is that if we look at this from the right view, it looks great now, but if we zoom in enough, we can see that it gets a little bit janky. Okay, and let's see if we can fix that. All right, so uh, what we'll do is we will pull the helix down onto a cylinder. So a cylinder should be theoretically perfectly round, and if we pull the twist, twisted line onto the cylinder, then our helix should also be perfectly round. So we'll need to make a cylinder first, and we can get that from the surface tab. There's a cylinder component here in the primitive section, so grab that, pull that onto the canvas, and uh, you can see right now it's not oriented right, it's using the wrong plane. We need the uh, YZ plane, so come to vector, go to planes, and click on the YZ plane. We'll just drop that here and we'll put that into the B slot on the cylinder component. So the B stands for base plane in this case. Usually, if it's needing a plane, it's abbreviated as P for plane, but this time they decided to go with B for base plane. All right, now, I don't want to see this plane, so I'm gonna turn the preview off. I'm gonna right click and turn the preview off. And this cylinder is uh, the wrong size. We need to give it the radius of our helix and also the length of our helix. So I'm just gonna back out a little bit I'm going to drag this over here and zoom in and we'll feed the radius into the radius slot on the cylinder component. And now you can see that as we change the radius, the cylinder's radius changes also. I'm going to zoom back out and drag this back into its proper place. Now I don't like my radius connection line going through my pre-helix line group. So I'm just going to double click on that to get one of these little nodes and I'll uh, realign it over here. I'll do it again and just redirect it around all of this stuff here, okay? Now we need uh, to give the cylinder the length of the helix, and we can do that by giving it the, we could either give it the length here or we could give it the length of the line. And so I would have thought up until today that we needed to go to curve and grab the uh, length component and feed our line into that and then feed the, uh, feed the length into the length slot on the cylinder, right? Which is, in fact, what you should do. But, turns out, you can just feed the line directly into the length slot. And apparently, and I, I was shocked to find this out, I've been experimenting with it a little bit today. Uh, apparently, if you feed a curve into a slot that is expecting a length, Grasshopper knows to get the length from the curve. That's how I'm taking that. So. I don't know if it's good practice or not, but I'm going to put a little node here and direct that like that. Also, uh, this here, since it comes out of the line, that is actually is the line. You could consider that as being the line itself. 
So we're just going to feed that into there like that. And uh, we can delete this. We don't need that. All right. So uh, the only thing left to do now really is to, well, we need to turn the preview off on the cylinder. We don't need to be seeing that. But we need to pull uh, the twist onto the cylinder. So we need to come to the curves tab, go to utilities, and grab the pull curve component. And it needs a curve and a surface. It needs the curve to be pulled, which is the twisted curve here. And it also needs a surface that's going to do the pulling. That is the cylinder. So we're going to put that into the surface slot. All right. So now we have a pulled curve made out of the twisted curve. And uh, let's see if it really helped anything. Right now we've got the twisted curve selected. We're going to go into the right viewport and we're just going to zoom in. Right now twisted is selected. So anything that you see green, that's the twisted curve. I'm going to zoom in here quite a bit. And as you can see, the twisted curve gets a bit janky right about here. But if we click on the pull curve to select it, when it turns green, you can see that it still looks like a, like a nice clean line. So let's turn the preview off on the twist so that all we can see is the pulled curve. So we can zoom in even more and more on that pulled curve. And sometimes, I guess it depends on the number of turns or something, you might see a little bit of jankiness in here, but you have to zoom in so much to see it. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom back out. And I think that's probably about as clean of a helix as you're going to get. Okay, so if, it, if you know how to make it cleaner, let me know in the, you know, uh, more perfectly round, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to, uh, to listen to your, your suggestions about that. All right, so uh, we could group all of this together. I'm going to select it all, hit Control G, and right click on it and name it Helix because this is the group of components that is actually making our helix. Okay, so uh, you could consider us done as far as making the helix. We've got a couple more things though that we've got to do. One thing we need to do is add more strands. So what if you want a double helix or a triple helix? Well, that's what we'll work on now. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if we can get back over here. Um, so right now we want to be able to add strands. So we're going to need a slider for that. So let's let's uh, hit the space bar. We want at least one strand always. So one is going to be our smallest number. Um, you can't do like fractional strands so far as I know. So we're going to have to stick with whole numbers. To specify that, just don't put any decimal places here. Just leave it as a whole number. We're going to hit less than. And let's think about how many, you know, what's the maximum number of strands we want. I really think five is probably overkill in most situations, but I'm going to go ahead and put five as the maximum number of strands. But you can put, if you want to put 10 or 100, you can do whatever you want, but I'm going to put from one to five. So now we have a slider that goes in whole numbers from one to five. Okay. And I'm going to leave it at one for right now, and we'll put it right here under the start angle. All right. And uh, we'll rename it strands. Now, I don't know what it should be called. You know, maybe there's a, a, a name for that, but um, I'm going to call it strands. Now, how can we get this uh, to make extra strands, you know, without us doing too much work? So, first of all, let's turn turns down to zero so that it's a straight line because each strand is going to be opposite the other. Or, or if we had two strands, the other strand will be opposite uh, this strand. If we had three strands, you could think of it dividing... You know, think of a helix as having a circle. As a matter of fact, let me actually draw a circle. We'll go out from the uh, center point there, and uh, we'll make it vertical. Can I can I specify that here? I, not now. Try this again. Make it vertical from the center of the world, and uh, we'll go out this way. Okay. So uh, this is is the circle. Is think of that as the end of our helix. All right, if we've got two strands, you kind of divide the circle in half. You put a strand over on this side and a strand over on this side. If you are going to have three strands, you divide the circle by three. So I'm going to actually divide the circle by three. Okay, so you would divide the circle by three and to get your three equally spaced strands, and etc. Uh, for four strands, you would divide that circle by four, etc. Okay. So a circle is 360 degrees because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for an angle, right? So a circle is 360 degrees. So let's, uh, we've already got a little uh, 
panel here with 360 in it. Let's click on that, press Control C and then Control V. Now we have another panel with 360 in it. And so we need to divide 360 by, the, oops, I've dropped my pin, uh, by uh, the number of strands. So let's go to the Maths tab and grab the division component and we'll plug the 360 into the top slot and we'll plug the number of strands into the bottom slot. So let's see what that gives us. We'll grab a panel here and plug the result in there. So right now with one strand, the result is 360. And if we uh, up that to two strands, we get 180. And that would in fact be, uh, if we have a start angle of zero, uh, 180 degrees would be where the other strand goes for a two stranded helix, all right? If we divide that by, if we make three strands, we get 120. And that's what you get when you divide a full circle by three, 120 degrees. So each of these strands would be 120 degrees away from each other on that kind of circle that uh, makes up the end of the helix. Okay, so this seems to be working for us right here. Uh, but it's not giving us a series of angles. We need a series of angles, all right? So how can we get that? Well, we can come up here to sets, and there is actually a component called series. That's probably gonna be what we need right there. We need a start number, all right? And that is gonna be our start angle. So we're just gonna plug our start angle into the uh, start number slot there on the series component. Then we need a the end here, that stands for a step. And that is actually what we've calculated here. So. This is our step. So for a two strands, uh, the step is 180 degrees. For three strands, the step is 120 degrees. That's the distance between each number after the start number. Okay, and then we need a count. And that is actually the number of strands. So we'll just plug that into there. And I need to go around my component here. So I'm gonna double click right there and make a little node so I can direct that around uh, my component here and I'll do that on top as well okay and we can group all this together and we'll name this um, start angles maybe how about that it's the start angle for each of the strands and it's generating them as a series I'm gonna back out a little bit I'm gonna move all of these components over a little bit to give me some space for this and we've got something here that goes through it I don't like that let's uh, so that is our start angle. Okay, we're gonna replace that. So I'm gonna pull this down a little bit. We're gonna replace that start angle isn't gonna go directly in here. So if we feed multiple angles into the rotate component, it will make multiple copies at different angles. So that's what we're doing. We're creating a series of angles. Okay, I'm gonna put a window up here and plug that in so you can see we've made a series of angles, zero, 120, and 240. And we're gonna feed that into this degree to radian converter and then that's going to feed all of the angles that have been converted to radians into the rotate um, component right here. All right. And there you go. Look at that. It is evenly spacing three strands. We can delete this panel now. We don't need that. And that comes from feeding uh, several angles, a series of angles, into the rotate component. Is that cool or what? I think that's pretty cool. Okay. I don't like how this is going. Uh, this radius is going through my group here. And I don't have a lot of room. So what I'm going to do is just double click on that and get me one of these little uh, components there so I can kind of direct around my group here. Okay. And we'll pull this one this way to kind of pull that away from it as well. Okay. So that is uh, our strands. And now if we add turns to that, you know, right now our turns are set to zero. That was just to help us kind of visualize what was going on. Now we're turning three strands. Okay. And that is actually it as far as what we're gonna do with this in this video. I'm gonna uh, kind of line these things up. So I'm gonna select them all and you can align them to the left. You can center them with each other or you can align them to the right. I'm gonna align them to the right. You can also uh, evenly space them by clicking on this thing here. So we're gonna evenly space them and then I'm gonna group them. So I'm gonna press Control G and we'll right click on that and name this inputs. All right, so this is all of our inputs that are going to feed into our helix uh, component, or definition rather. And now one more thing, you know, so we, uh, because ultimately what you want to do is come in here and bake, you know, this is our helix right here, or helix is, uh, we want to bake that. So you right click on it and then click on bake, right? And then you click on OK and it becomes real objects uh, in Rhino that you can uh, that you can actually manipulate in Rhino, okay? So we can do whatever we want now with these real objects in Rhino. 
but I don't like having to come over here and then come back to my inputs, you know. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull in a curve component right here under the params tab. So because the helixes are curves, that's why we're going to use a curve component or a curve container, if you want to call it that. We're going to right click on that and rename it helixes. Okay. You can also spell this, by the way, helices, if you prefer that. So it can be helixes or helices. I thought it had to be uh, CES, but turns out you can spell it both ways, I think. Okay, and we can just feed our helixes into this, right? And now we actually have two. Yeah, we don't need to see both of them. So we're going to turn the preview off on this one. And now we're going to just take this one and drag it over here. And if you want, you can put you some little... I uh, know they get all twisted. So I wouldn't bother with that. Just delete that. Don't bother with that. Just let it go through all of these. So we're going to do something else to take care of that. Okay. I'm going to zoom in here. You're going to uh, right click on this, go to wire display and click on hidden. All right. So when you're selecting it and it's green, you do have this ugly wire that comes out and quickly bends back around and goes through all of your stuff, you know, and it's terrible. It's ugly and I hate it. But when you're not clicked on it, you just have this little kind of wireless symbol coming off of it. And that's because we set the wires to hidden. All right. Now, typically I don't, I wouldn't use that like up here or anything because I like to see where all these different things go. But uh, in this case, it's real handy to have, to have that. So we can uh, just right click on this and click on bake right here, right while we're still by all of our inputs and click OK. So we never have to go look at the rest of the definition anymore. We can just do everything right here okay we can just zoom way in and do all of our work right here in this area all right so now we've got these real uh, objects over here in the rhino space uh, that we made with our grasshopper definition you can do whatever you want to do with these okay now you could do some other stuff with this you could uh, flow it along curve and i'll just uh, show you real quickly uh, the power of that so if we had a curve component right here and let's say we drew a curve now, I would be neater than this if I was really going to do this. But I'm just throwing you a quick example up here. Um, we can set this curve right here. So I'm going right, to select the curve, right-click on the curve component, and set one curve. Okay. And uh, we want to flow our helixes, so we would need the flow component. You can find that under Transform. All right. So you know, normally I'd put, I'd put uh, this all this way over here. Okay. Just, just so you know, <laughs> I wouldn't have it all over here. But this is just so we can quickly uh, do this. So the geometry that we're going to flow, that is our helixes. All right. And we're going to uh, use as our base curve. That's going to be our axis line right here. So we can just bring this into here. And uh, we're going to flow along this curve, which is this one right here. Now, the thing is, is that um, we need uh, the length of this helix to match the length of the curve. And this is cool. What you can do with that is just feed the curve into the X component there. I used to would go and get the length component, feed that in there and then feed the length into the X slot. But you can actually just feed the curve directly into the X slot. And it figures out that you need the length of the curve for that. Okay. Is that cool or what? So now uh, let's turn the preview of the curve off. So now if we adjust this uh, curve, you know, with the edit points, uh, it adjusts itself. This gets longer and whatnot. So, and you could uh, hide the previews of all these things if you wanted to. All right. So this is just an example of something you could do with this. All right. But, uh, and of course, like I said, you would do all of this in a much neater fashion. You do it all over here. So it kind of was, you know, beyond the point of what I meant to do in this video. So I'm going to just delete all of that. And uh, now I have to feed the length back into my X component. All right. Okay. So there you go. We, we can control the length of our helix. We can control the radius. We can control the start angle. We can control the number of strands and the number of turns. Okay. And you could pipe this and you could do whatever, whatever it is that you were wanting to do with your helix, you can do once you have the helix. All right. And don't forget to save your grasshopper file so that you can use this later. All right. So that uh, concludes this tutorial. I want to thank all of you for watching and I hope to see all of you in future videos.